Hi. For some time I've wanted to be able to regrind blunt milling cutters, but I don't generate enough blunt ones to warrant buying a purpose-built uh, cutter grinder. So I applied myself to thinking how I, could I go about this uh, using stuff that I've already got at hand. Uh, the first thing I thought was how do I hold the cutters that I want to be grinding? Well, I've already got a collet chuck for the miller and I thought well why not use that to hold the cutters because I can take any size of cutter that I have because the collet set is quite comprehensive so uh, when you grind a, a milling cutter obviously it has to go backward and forward past the wheel so I needed to hold this and have some means to advance and retract it past the grinding reel and here I'm talking about the helix angle of the cutter not the face uh, it's been a mild irritation that I haven't been able to think of something but uh, I had another think and I've come up with something that's well it's not really poor engineering but lets the job get done so there's the cutter holder so now uh, I need a means to hold this and to slide it forwards and backwards well in my toolbox I happen to have one of these things uh, which wasn't the right size uh, but the one I had was an MT2 taper here so I bought this one for about £13 so now I've got an extension and this is a nice diameter so if I had a bush that I could slide this forwards and backwards through uh, maybe that's the start of being able to advance and retract the cutter so I decided to make a bush that would take this so there's the bush that I, I happen to have at hand enough material to make that in all these projects the issue really for me is getting hold of materials to do it so that fits on there so that is the means of advancing and retracting the cutter past the grinding wheel so that's that part thought out, now I've got to hold it somehow I should say I also had this bench grinder that I wasn't using uh, and I thought well that can spin the grinding wheel for me and I've already got a diamond grinding wheel which I really like using because they're not too aggressive uh, and although they can tackle really hard stuff they don't uh, remove the stock too quickly so it's uh, they to me they feel a bit more controllable than a, a grit wheel so that's the second item that I bought I bought the Morse taper adapter with a plain diameter and I also bought this uh, diamond grinding wheel from China uh, cost about 14 pounds so I've got the grinder, I've got the grinding wheel, I had to make an adapter uh, which is there to fits on the grinding machine and the grinding wheel fits on that so plans coming together I also had this piece of plate this was a this feature I put in and I wish I didn't because I'll explain that later but that was the plate I had uh, so my plan was to put that on there and with this adapter in this hole that was already there in the plate 
So now I've got the plate. Uh, you see I've got this big block as well. Let me just tilt the camera down a little. In order to take the bush and hold it for rigidly, I had this big block of oak. So I machined out this circle or radius to, to take this bush. So that goes in there. This adapter slides through the bush and the milling cutter collet holder fits in there. Now with the, the bush in the corner of the plate you can see that this will this will slide and as it does so the cutter approaches the wheel here. So then I needed to hold this bush in place so in the same way that uh, I machined the, the bottom piece I machined a cap to screw down and clamp that bush tightly. It's held in place with wood screws and the, the block is uh, held in place on the steel plate with wood screws from the bottom. So hardly precision engineering, but it does hold it in place. Well, here's the assembly in place. I'll just demonstrate how the cutter is able to move past the wheel. And this is free to rotate. You need an, a nice slide-in fit inside that bush so that it doesn't uh, give you any left right movement as it goes past the wheel so the better you can machine it uh, the better the, the outcome uh, but you can see it can turn and move in and out and by coming to the side you notice the cutter is approaching the wheel until it actually touches so I thought what we need then is a stop so that when we come this way there's a solid stop so that you can reproduce the depth of cut for both, well, for all flutes of the cutter that you're grinding. Uh, for that reason, I bolted this piece of angle iron with a screw. There's a, another piece here, you see, which is the stop. This is the adjustable screw. So by screwing that in, you can have a stop which you can come back to every time. So having got that far what you then need is a support to go under the flute of the cutter so that as you pass the cutter, pass the wheel, the grinding wheel, the finger underneath it controls the rotation. So then uh, what was needed was a finger to go under the cutter close to the wheel to control the rotation along the flute as you grind along the flute. This is the adjustable height finger that you need to support the cutter flute as it goes past the grinding wheel. Uh, as you can see it, it's touching underneath the cutter and what you need is as the cutter starts to, when you're setting it up this is, uh, you need to set it so that the flute that you're grinding is, the, the end that you can see is horizontal. And when you've got that, you then need to drop the finger so that it cuts 
the required angle, clearance angle on the side. Uh, I think five degrees is uh, the usual amount, uh, which you find out by trig. I've actually printed a, a chart uh, on Excel for every diameter of cutter and varying angles and it's quite easy to make a chart to do that but initially you start off and you you make it level touching the finger and then you need to drop the finger by the required amount to give you the required clearance angle up the flute of the cutter this thread is an M10 thread which is 1.5 millimeters pitch so you can you know one turn of the collar will advance or retard it by one and a half millimeters so you can do an approximation of uh, the amount that you need to raise or lower it well usually lower it from the center position uh, I'll show you uh, how the how I've made the finger uh, this cutout is there because at one point I thought it might be better for the finger to be stationary as the cutter approached the wheel but later I decided that it was better for the finger to remain in the same place all the time uh, as the cutter approached the wheel the finger moves with it um, so there's a there is a slight chance you start grinding the finger if you go in too far but if you position it in the optimum place under the flute uh, you should be okay but uh, I'll show you how the, how I've made the finger what I've done here is take a piece of 10 millimeter bar uh, put a thread along it I did actually thread it all the way to here uh, and then I reduced the bottom part down to 8 millimeters because this is where the locking screw will go to hold it rigid <coughs> excuse me uh, I put a brass piece on the end to act as the finger you want something that will slide smoothly over the cutter and this seems to be better than the steel piece I had but it still could be better I've actually thought of possibly using a glass cutter wheel uh, up at the tip but uh, I haven't got around to trying that yet uh, the thing is you need to keep it quite narrow here because it has to go under the flute of the cutter so that's the finger obviously by turning it inside the collar it advances or retards the finger under the cutter then I made this piece this is sorry this piece Let's zoom out a little bit you can see it's held on this plate with two screws from the bottom uh, eight, eight millimeters uh, for the lower part that, that this piece goes into and then clearance for the ten millimeters there so that will slide into that this is the locking screw when you made the adjustment you tighten that and it holds it rigid obviously a, a slot to allow for adjustment inside the plate well I'm going to try a trial grind in a moment I've positioned the finger under the cutter flute uh, so that the the cutter is approximately horizontal or the leading edge of the cutter is approximately horizontal now uh, what I then need to do is to turn this collar 
to drop the finger and introduce the clearance angle to the side of the cutter and as I said I made this chart the cutter the cutter is a 16 millimeter cutter uh, I think I'll go for 60 degrees on a 16 millimeter cutter that's 0.84 of a millimeter now the lead on the screw the adjustment screw of the finger is one and a half millimeters per rev so 0 0.84 uh, for the way I'm doing it here I'm just gonna approximate it so uh, it's a bit over half a revolution of the collar so that's what I'll do uh, I'll do it off camera so I'm going to uh, release the locking screw turn this collar by just over half a turn which should drop the finger and introduce the cutting angle I'll do that now right I'm going to try grinding this cutter I have fiddled with it before so I have learned to some degree the best way to go about this I find it's better to hold it here and actually pull the cutter back while it rests on the finger rather than trying to advance it while resting on the finger uh, this, this is the best uh, way I found to do it so I'm applying pressure here and releasing the, the screw until on the adjust releasing the screw on the adjuster until I hear there it start to grind. I can take the cut off, rotate the cutter 180 degrees, go back in to here, turn it down onto the finger, come back. the clearance angle by dropping the finger and grinding in the secondary relief. I don't think I'm going to bother with that here. Might just try the cutter out. Course, put, then it could rub, but uh, no, I will. I'll have a go at uh, grinding the secondary angle. Well, here we go, trying to grind the secondary clearance I've marked the coloured the flute with a black marker so that uh, I can easier see the the grind I'm just advancing the cutter here listening for the the grind
go try that cutter out, I think. This is the cutter I just ground. This is a one millimeter cut in aluminium. on the flutes. See if that cleans it up. Usually does. Hardly precision engineering, but at least it makes the cutters usable again. I think what I've done could be improved a heck of a lot with better materials, but at least it's working, which, uh, which is great. In order to cut the seating for the bush in the wood, I made up this tool. You see simple diameters, a cross hole to take six millimeter high speed steel, locked from the bottom with a hexagon screw. I put this in the milling machine and uh, I'll demonstrate on a piece of scrap how I mill the radius. Getting the final accurate diameter was a bit of uh, hit and miss. Basically I just uh, tapped the cutter further out gently gently uh, until the diameter was suitable. This is how I machine the seat in for the bush.
course getting the right diameter is a bit of a work of art because there's no dials or clear way to get the tool cutting the right diameter you can have a go at it by measuring the, uh, the shank diameter and then by a bit of arithmetic uh, you can work out the radius of the cutter and add it to the radius of the shank and you're going to be somewhere near the diameter that you want uh, after that it's just a question of slackening the screw and, and tapping this forward or back until you get a nice fit well that's it that's my attempt at a cutter grinder I'm sure it could be done better I'm sure I could do it better if I started again uh, it seems to work I'm sure it wouldn't be high precision but I, it seems good enough to just to sharpen cutters you just want to use for reducing stock with no great precision but there we are that's it thanks for watching